Hey Algebra 2, today's lesson is called Sums, Differences, and Products of Square Roots. So we're going to be adding and subtracting and multiplying square roots. Alright, well, let's begin. So we have here in our first example, we have 4 root 12 minus 2 root 18 minus 2 root 27 plus root 50. Now you have to treat the roots kind of like variables where you can't add and subtract them unless they have the same number underneath the root. So we can't add and subtract these right now because this has 12, 18, 27, and 50. Um, so we have to see if can we break these down. Um, just like in our first lesson, or our second lesson where we can break down roots if they have factors that are perfect squares. Now I can break down 12 to be 4 times 3 because I know I can take a square root of 4. Here I can break down 18 to be 9 times 2, alright, and 27, I could break that down to be 9 times 3 because 9 is a perfect square, and lastly we could break down 50 to be 25 times 2 because again, the uh, 25 is a perfect square. Now when I take the square root, square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 4 because there's 4 already on the outside, gives me 8, and there's still a 3 underneath. Here, the square root of 9 is 3, but there's already a 2, so 2 times 3 is 6. We're left with a 2 underneath. Here, square root of 9 is 3, times 2 is 6, root 3, 3 stays underneath. And lastly, we have here, a f square root of 25 is 5, root 2. And now I see I have an 8 root 3 minus 6 root 3, so we can act like these, you know, like coefficients, uh, even though they're technically not. We could treat it like that, 8 minus 6. So when you combine, don't change the root when you're adding and subtracting. So this is going to be 8 minus 6, which is 2 root 3. 8 root 3 minus 6 root 3 is 2 root 3. Negative 6 root 2 plus 5 root 2 is a negative 1 root 2, but you don't technically have to put the 1 there. So this would be your final answer. You can't do anything more with this because they have different roots and you can't break those down anymore. So again, what we did, we broke down each root, we took the square roots out, or we took the squares out, we rooted them, and then we combined like terms. Okay, this has root 3, these have root 2. Alright, now of course let's get a little bit tougher, throw in some variables. We have 3x squared root 20x squared to the third y minus x root 45 x to the fifth y minus x to the third root 5xy. Now again, um, you, we can't combine these the way they are because they have to have the same root and they have to same, have the same powers of exponents on the outside. Okay, well, let's try to break this first one down. You can break down 20 by doing 4 times 5 because 4 is a perfect square. And remember, in our last lesson, if you have an odd exponent, we want to subtract 1 from it. So we're going to rewrite it as x squared times x to the first times y. We break this down. Uh, factors of 45 that's a perfect square is 9. So 9 times 5 is 45. x to the 5th, since it's an odd number, we want to write, write it out like this, subtract 1. So x to the 4th times x times y. And lastly, this one actually you can't break it down at all. So you just have to rewrite it the way it is. So x cubed root 5xy. Now what happens is, now we can take the square roots out. Square root of 4 is 2 times 3, which is 6. When you take the x squared out, remember, when you're taking a variable out, you just cut the exponent in half. So when you take x squared out, it becomes x to the first. But there's already two powers out there, so we're going to add those together to be x to the third. Again, there's two powers already out here. When you take the square root of this, it becomes x to the first. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Um, you can't take any y's out, so all you're left with on the inside is this 5, this x, and this y. So root 5xy, still left on the inside. Now in this one, we could take the square root of 9, which is 3. 
When you take the square root of 4, or x to the 4th, it becomes x squared. But there's already one exponent out here, so you're going to add those two to that. So it becomes x to the 3rd. And you're left with 5xy underneath. And lastly, we have to bring this one down, since we didn't use it yet. And now, notice we all have, they all have x to the 3rd on the outside, and they all have root 5xy. So we can actually combine all these. So we have 6 x cubed minus 3x cubed, which is 3x cubed, minus one more, so 2x cubed root 5xy. And again, remember, you don't change the roots when you're adding and subtracting. Okay, for our next example, we have root 15 times root 10. So we just added and subtracted roots. Now we're going to multiply. Now there's a couple ways you can handle this. Um, I'll show you both methods. The first way is to break these down into factors as much as possible. So you can break down 15 to be 5 times 3, and you could break down 10 to be 5 times 2, which technically you can write a root over each one, root 5 times root 3 times root 5 times root 2. And what, you, what you're going to want to do is look for pairs, and uh, pairs basically cancel out the root. So root 5 times root 5 is 5. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. And we're left with root 3 times root 2. You're allowed to multiply different roots. You just multiply what's underneath. So that'd be root 6. So again, pairs cancel out the root. So we just have 5 and then root 6. Now the other way of doing that, so that this is the first method. The second way is first multiply underneath. So we get 150. 15 times 10 is 150. Now we can just break this down. We can say 150 is equal to 25 uh, times 6. When you take the square root of 25, you get 5, and you're left with a 6 underneath. So if you do it correctly, either method will work. Um, this method is probably better to use when you're dealing with much bigger numbers, or else you're going to have to try to figure out what factors um, is for this number. So if I were to give you something like 48, root 48 times uh, root 18, you would definitely want to use this method uh, because you'll break it down into smaller numbers. This method is probably better just to multiply it first when you're dealing with smaller numbers underneath the root. So if I were to give you uh, root 18 times root 3, it would probably be easier just to uh, multiply these first, then break it down to find the biggest root. So, But either way will work. Um, if you do it correctly, they both work. So good luck with that. Now let's multiply for root 3x cubed times 5 root 15x to the 8th. So again, it's the same concept where you can break them down first or you can break them down second. In a problem like this, I like to break it, I like to multiply first underneath and then break it down. So first we have 4 times 5. Always deal with the numbers out in front first. So that gives us 20. On the inside we have 3 times 15, which is 45. x to the 3rd times x to the 8th is x to the 11th. Now let's break this down. Now that we've uh, multiplied underneath the root, we see if we can now break down the root. So we have 45 here, which breaks down to be 9 times 5. Okay, and we said, remember, odd exponent, just subtract one and leave one on the inside. Okay, so 11 is the same thing as writing 10 plus 1. So now we take the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 times 20 is 60. The square root of x to the 10th, you cut that exponent in half, becomes x to the 5th, which leaves us with just a 5x underneath. So this would be our final answer. Okay. So again, uh, for these problems with the variables, I like to multiply them first on the inside and then see if I can break these down. All right. Um, now we're going to do a little distributing. So we have 2 root 5, and then in parentheses we have 6 root 5 minus root 10. Okay. Let's try this problem out. So the problem like this, we're going to distribute 
So always deal with your numbers in front first. 2 times 6 is 12. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25. Okay? Minus, and then we're going to distribute to this term as well. 2 times 1 is just 2. Root 5 times root 10 is root 50. And of course, we always want to see if we could break down these roots. Well, the square root of 25 is just 5. So 5 times uh, 12 is 60. Minus, now here we can rewrite 50 as 25 times 2. 25 times 2. So now when I take the 25 out, it becomes a 5. So 5 times 2 is 10, leaving us with a root 2 on the inside. So this would be our final answer right here. Again, so distribute. Don't forget, multiply the numbers in front and then the roots. And then do that to both terms. Okay? Then we break down the roots and see if we can combine anything. All right, let's do one more problem. We're going to do a little foiling. You guys remember foil? Um, we have two parentheses, 4 root 3 plus root 2 times 2 root 3 minus 5 root 2. All right. So now we're going to FOIL these. So first, oops, 4 root 3 times 2 root 3. 4 times 2 is 8. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9. Outer, now we're going to do our outer. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6. Inner, 1, invisible 1 times 2 is 2. Root 2 times root 3 is root 6. And on the outside here, we have root 2, or pos positive 1 times a negative 5 is a negative 5. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. Okay? Now we see if we can break this down. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. Here we have like terms, so we can actually combine those like terms. Negative 20 root 6 plus 2 root 6 is a negative 18 root 6. And lastly, we have root 4 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2 times 5 gives us 10. And again, always see if you can combine like terms. We have 24 minus 10, which is 14. And then we just have the minus 18 root 6. So this would be our final answer right here. So again, when it's set up like this, where you have two terms in two parentheses with a plus or minus in between, we're going to FOIL. So first, that's how we got this number, 8 root 9, outer, inner, last. And then if you can take the square roots of any of these terms, which most of them will be able to, we break it down. Square root of 9 is 3 times 8 is 24. Square root of 4 is 2 times 5 is 10. And we combine the middle numbers. And for our last step, we combine the outside because they are both whole numbers without roots. So they are like terms. So uh, good luck with that. That is how we add, subtract, and multiply square roots. So good luck. All right, have a good one. Bye.